Hey guys, so our next thing to do is to create a light shootout sequence. So where we start is just to find the light mesh that we are actually going to be shooting, uh, selecting it, uh, right click and finding content browser. This will take us to the static mesh which we actually added to our scene. Uh, if you double click on that, it's an LT light by the way, uh, it opens the static mesh editor. Uh, if you go down the right hand side to the LOD info, and just use the drop down uh, boxes until you get to where it says material. Use the magnifying glass and that will find it in the content browser window for you. So you can close the static mesh editor again and, and double. Uh, what we need to do is create a copy of this uh, light material. The reason for that is we don't want to actually be editing anything uh, part of the Unreal Engine. We want to create copies of that just in case it affects the way the engine runs. You do that for anything you're doing really. So to do that you right click on it and go to create a copy. Uh, you can name your package light shootout and then grouping materials and then new name call it matte underscore light or one. You can really call these any way you want. I like to group things by like materials, meshes, particles, that kind of thing. And then just uh, if you've got a material just name it matte underscore something. Uh, as long as your package name is different than your actual level name, that's fine. So if you've called your level light shootout, don't call your package light shootout because the, it'll lead to confusion. So just hit OK there, and then uh, once you press OK, I press cancel then because I've already done it before. But once you hit OK, you'll come to a it'll come to a package at the bottom of your screen called light shootout, um, and if you right click that it'll ask you where to save it. We've covered saving packages in a, a, a previous tutorial video but basically you just want to create a, a UPK folder inside any map file uh, and then save it in there. Alternatively you can save it to your desktop just so you know where the package is. Uh, and then we'll have our light. You'll see this light lit up for the time being so double click on the material with the light that's uh, lit up and then we'll go into here. The way you see this light now is like that. Okay, so the way you navigate the material editor window is left mouse button is to go pan around, and then if you hold down the left and mouse right button and just scroll in and out, it moves, uh, it zooms in and out. So uh, the only thing we need to do in here is to find where it says multiply and the multiply going into the emissive channel, and simply just highlight this link here hold down the alt key and left mouse click that'll uh, turn this light off here that's all you need to do in here for now uh, so if you just do, tick the green tick box uh, in the top left hand corner apply changes that'll save the changes that we've made to the material we can shut this window down now and it'll have a little star next to here and it just means we have to save the package so I'll just right click and save so now we know where our package is being referenced. The next thing we need to do is to create a duplicate of all these lights. So the way that we do this, I've already done, we can close our generic browser. The way we can do this is just, if we're back in game mode by pressing G, uh, just highlight the light and hold down Alt and move it to the side somewhere. I've got my drag grid set at 64, which is really nice for being able to separate objects on an even scale. So if I just delete this, and so I've alternate dragged this uh, light, extra light here. So when I've got it, you, yours should still be lit up. Yours won't have the unlit material yet. So just click on there, press F4, and then under Static Mesh Actor and Static Mesh Component, go down to Rendering, and where it says Materials, press the plus green um, Add New Item button, and I'll add this zero reference here. So now open your generic browser, select the unlit material that you created, and then move that off to the side, and then this little green arrow, press that, and then that'll add your light. So again, if there's nothing there, I've deleted that out of there, so click the material, and then press the green button there, and that'll add the unlit material here. So, uh, the next thing you need to do is to scroll down, uh, if I close these windows back up, scroll down to where it says display and under hidden tick that box and that means it will be hidden in game. 
So if I press G now in my perspective, that's all we see in game. We don't see this extra one here, we just see this one. So that'll mean we toggle the visibility of these two in the game. So now that we have both selected, uh, repeat that process for all the lights in your level. So if I go around to the other lights, I've got an unlit one and a lit one. On all the lights. Right. The next thing to do is to open up your Kismet window. So, um, actually no. The next thing to do is to select all the lights, uh, right click, um, select uh, select matching static meshes this class and that will select all your lights in your game. If you press F4 now it will say 12 selected and I have 12 lights in my scene which is correct. So I can close that and now I have them all selected. I'll right click on them and press convert and then convert to mover. Okay. So that has changed them purple in our scene. If we look at these lights here and anywhere where the lights are they've moved to purple and that means it's an interactable object in your level it's called an interp actor so the thing we need uh, with all these lights selected all of our 12 lights selected now we've got dynamic SM actor and stuff like that selected the only thing we need to do is to go down to where it says collision and under collision type um, block all by default, when you change something to an interp actor, it'll have no collision. So we just need to make sure we can collide with bullets and stuff like that. So collision type, block all. Okay. So uh, when we go into Kismet by pressing this green K button here, it'll load up our Kismet window. Uh, it's going to be a bit hard to show you exactly what's going on, but I'll try my best. So we select on our first light. Uh, right click here uh, and go to new event uh, using interp actor 0 which is yours may say interp actor 5 or whatever just as long as it says new event using interp actor and we'll go to take damage okay so now we've got interp actor 0 which is this light here and we're saying if this actor takes damage what do we want to happen well first thing we want to turn off these lights because that's what the lights doing so if we hold down the T button a T uh, letter on your keyboard left mouse click uh, it brings up a toggle item it should do one second right alternatively you can right click here new action and go to toggle and just click toggle Okay, so that's new action, right click, toggle, toggle. Alternatively, you can press T and left mouse button. I'm not sure why that's not working at the moment, uh, but it should work in your editor. Um, so first, we'll hook up the out to the turn off. So just left mouse click here and go to turn off. And then with these lights here, we'll right click on this uh, purple tab here with our, actually you can select both of your lights at once if you want so click on the first light and then the second light and then right click and then new object using point light and, and this, the spotlight uh, we can highlight these by pressing down control alt and left mouse dragging that'll uh, select things and we can move them into you know a viewable position one thing I will say about these lights is if we close down this Kismet, um, if we click on these lights um, and press F4, it says point light toggleable and also spotlight toggleable. This means they can be turned on and off. Um, if you go into your content browser and go to actor classes and go to the light uh, where we found our skylight and if you go to point light, which is what that first one is, and drop down you have a normal point light which is when you hit at the L key and left mouse button in your level or you can have point light movable and point light toggleable these are more expensive lights in terms of processing power so you normally want to use a point light but if you're doing anything with the light you want a toggleable or a movable for this uh, thing we just chose a toggleable one so you just left mouse click it and drag it into your scene and the properties are exactly the same as your other light 
and the same applies to your spotlight there um, spotlight spotlight toggleable and then you can just drag them in there and play around with the light settings so the toggleable and movable one allows us to interact with the kismet um, so we take damage uh, if we click on this uh, event here and go to damage threshold we'll just change this to one that means that as soon as it takes damage uh, it should turn off those lights the next thing we want to do is to change it from lit to unlit so we'll right click here new action toggle toggle hidden this time and then move that into place I'm moving these by holding control and left mouse clicking uh, you can move those around like that go from out to toggle you could just have it as hide but since we're selecting both of them we're toggling hidden uh, and unhidden so uh, we'll select both our lights here in the perspective window uh, right click on this target uh, purple tab and uh, click new object bars using Interp Actor 8 and 0. Yours may say Interp Actor 5 or whatever, no problem, just whichever one you want to use. And we'll give this a quick test out. I'm not sure if it'll work straight away, but uh, we'll just give it a test to see. So we'll close down our um, Kismet window. The one thing we haven't done yet is add a player start, so you guys know how to do that. Just right click on your floor somewhere, go to add actor, add player start, and if it ends up in the floor, just uh, drag it out a little bit and I'm still on the 64 drag grid so I'll just use my bracket keys to bring that down and just uh, bring it out the floor a little bit more and that looks pretty nice it's facing the door right now so I'll just quickly rotate it 90, 180 degrees sorry and we should be good to play from there um, the, the one thing I do, would say is in the newer versions of UDK if we go to view world properties so that's at the top there view world properties and go to game type uh, a default game type doesn't have a gun anymore and your character is slightly taller than another unreal character which is why we've got um, our character in our scene referenced so uh, if you just go to UT deathmatch or I think any type of UT game type will do it but if we just change our default game type to UT deathmatch and uh, this is a scale of our character so if um, that just gives us good reference in our level so if we just um, instead of playing from the player start uh, we'll just right click on the floor and just press play from here and this will take us into the editor window so now if we shoot this light then yeah that goes off the lights go off as you can see there is no spotlight on the floor there and no point light here and our off um, light is there. Obviously they switch places so we need to move them to back in line but that works for now. So we'll stop the video there and move on.